kell léptetni. Hogy kell léptetni? János, dear colleagues, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. And uh, I would say that uh, I'm going to talk uh, to you about the project uh, within the uh, seventh framework of the Nano Ataro program of the EU. And it's in collaboration uh, with Sion from Erlangen. And uh, uh, we had a, co a joint work together. So, but first of all, as you all uh, know, supraparamagnetic iron oxide containing nanoparticles uh, oops, has sorry, yeah, <clears throat> has an iron oxide core and uh, it's uh, uh, covered with dextrin or other components and also uh, that might be some uh, ligands decorate uh, the surface and uh, it's used for the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of uh, various diseases just like uh, cancer. And also another use for these uh, spions is the magnetically guided uh, drug delivery and uh, uh, the most uh, of the uh, uh, use uh, of these uh, particles, nanoparticles, is probably the uh, MRI uh, imaging. So many uh, different uh, spions uh, have worked out, but uh, as you can see from this review, many of them uh, didn't even reach the market because uh, they experienced uh, some problems uh, with them. And uh, which reached the market, they also uh, not uh, long ago uh, 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 went to the market. For example, here you can see Resolvist is, uh, is uh, approved in uh, 2003 and uh, you will see it turned out to be not a long uh, 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 leaf uh, compound. Another uh, compound is uh, fer Ferahem which is uh, used uh, for the treatment of uh, iron deficiency. And uh, the problem is uh, uh, with this compound, or many of the compounds, that they show hypersensitivity uh, reaction. And uh, therefore, many of them uh, should be withdrawn from the market. Uh, first, uh, oops, this uh, this uh, iron deficient uh, treatment uh, Rienzo and uh, later on more agents were withdrawn like uh, the MRI contrast agents Resovist and, and Cinerem and also as I mentioned Rienzo or with the other name Ferahem. So what is the problem? What is the problem with these uh, spions? Uh, the answer is CARPA and uh, this, as you heard, and you know, probably complement activation related uh, pseudo allergy. When you infuse such nano uh, particles, then this, oops, I, I need to learn how to work with this. Okay, so uh, it, uh, it activates the immune system because uh, it's the size of the viruses and uh, it's uh, uh, the immune system uh, answers as it was uh, a virus and gives a reaction and there is the good side of these nanoparticles that the, the classical side effects dis disappeared because for example for cancer targeting either passive or uh, active targeting they are good because uh, it's uh, uh, the tissue concentration and blood level is much higher for example with a liposomal or uh, uh, a spion uh, uh, targeted uh, molecule but the problem is that uh, this CARPA appears in the human uh, trials. From the very beginning, uh, it has been uh, seen. And when we compare the human and the animal uh, symptoms, then we can uh, see hemodynamics, cardiopulmonary uh, skin and blood uh, symptoms. And they are very similar in, in humans and the animals. As, as, as you heard, the pig model is, uh, is uh, selected because this is the most sensitive, so it reflects the responses or the 
the responses, but is expected in the more uh, in the uh, more sensitive or more sensitive humans. The mechanism of car, uh, CARPA is rather complex. It's not only the complement activation. We still think that this is the key factor, but in addition, there, are, there is the release of primary mediators and also secondary mediators, for example, thromboxane uh, A2. <coughs> and if you uh, look at uh, the various uh, drugs, then you can see that uh, many of them, many nanodrugs and biologicals, uh, as Janos mentioned, the pegylated, uh, uh, not only liposomes, but other, other particles show this uh, reaction, this CARPA reaction. And the problem is that the frequency is rather high. And also the mortality is, uh, in, in some cases, unexpectedly high. So therefore, uh, the, the also it is reacted immediately. And uh, they suggested to use animal models uh, to evaluate this adverse uh, side effect. And uh, what we are using in our laboratory is this pig model. And in the pig model, uh, the most important parameter what we are using is the uh, pulmonary arterial pressure change. But of course, we monitor the systemic blood pressure change, also the anti uh, uh, CO2, ECG, oxygen, uh, and other parameters. And also, we take blood samples. And from these blood samples, we, we analyze uh, uh, thromboxan and other uh, secondary mediators. And also, we follow the changes in the, in the blood cells. So we, we count uh, the white blood cells and, and uh, see uh, the effect of CARPA on these uh, uh, thrombocytes and white blood cells. So here, here uh, are the symp symptoms once more in, in peak. So hemodynamic, cardiac, skin reaction, and blood uh, abnormalities. And uh, it's an earlier study. We started with liposomes. Uh, we have uh, a, a big experience with liposomes. And here you can see the increase, the immediate increase uh, in uh, pulmonary arterial pressure, which then declines uh, a couple of minutes or a quarter of hours later. And also, there is an increase in thromboxane. And uh, what we use is uh, zymosan uh, for, for as a positive uh, control in our experiments. So we always compare and just one thing that it doesn't on only activate macrophages, but also activates the uh, doesn't on only activates the, the complement system, but we are told like uh, receptors, it also activates the ma macrophages, which could be also an important uh, phenomenon. And now uh, I uh, turn to uh, our uh, joint work with the Erlangen uh, guys. So first of all, we studied the effect of lauric acid and uh, bovine uh, and human serum albumin coating in the immunotoxic uh, properties of these pions. <coughs> and uh, the Erlangen people had uh, uh, this paper on this, and then we, stud we were studying uh, the CARPA properties of, uh, of their particles. And uh, for this first particle, we, we found a huge CARPA reaction. So it's in one milligram per kilogram uh, dose. Uh, we saw this uh, large uh, elevation in the pulmonary arterial uh, uh, pressure. And uh, when uh, we repeated, it was still the same. So we, we didn't see any tachyphylaxis. And when we uh, gave a tenfold higher dose, uh, then we saw an even bigger reaction. And also, in bit, uh, we, we saw some respiratory er uh, arrest repeatedly. But at the end, we saw our positive control reaction, the zymosan reaction. But uh, n uh, uh, we have to say that this uh, LABSA spion can cause CARPA. But note that uh, the analysis of this batch uh, uh, revealed the presence of endotoxin uh, in the preparation. So it could comp contribute to this response, but also it doesn't exclude that uh, the particle itself was reactogenic, but we don't know the, the uh, rate of this, this two effect. Anyway, we uh, decided to go further, and uh, another particle was syn uh, synthesized where, where uh, this uh, bovine serum albumin 
what, what was uh, suspected to be in, uh, involved in the reaction. It was replaced with human serum albumin, so it was a LAHS spion. And uh, the analysis showed that it uh, was uh, uh, not contaminated with endotoxin. And we were also inter interested in the long-term stability. So after all, we did uh, this uh, study. So we consider this just a, as a pilot study. What we have seen uh, in a, a low dose, uh, because also the quantity was limited, what was produced for the first time, in 0.5 milligram per kilogram, it didn't give uh, us this huge CARPA. There was some small reaction, but, uh, but really not very significant. But on the other hand, Zymozan really uh, gave the reaction. And uh, when we uh, applied uh, a five-fold uh, dose, we also didn't see much reaction, but for comparison, we didn't uh, only use saline as a negative control, but also we used human serum albumin, and there was something. Of course, uh, we have to continue this uh, study, so like I said, uh, this is uh, only considered preliminary studies, but it's very interesting. And as you can see, Zymozan at the end of the study gave a huge reaction. And now we turn to another uh, preparation. Uh, uh, the, uh, L, uh, the lauric acid and uh, serum albumin was replaced with, with dextran coating. And you remember that these earlier dextran coated uh, drugs were withdrawn from the market because they were so reactive. So we were very, very excited whether this other kind of formulation, what uh, uh, the Sion uh, people did, uh, could uh, avoid CARPA. And uh, we had a joint paper the complete characterization of this particle. And in this paper, we did again uh, the immunotoxicity. And as you can see, these uh, so-called DEX uh, spions, which had an average diameter of about 80 nanometer, didn't show a CARPA in 0.5 uh, milligram per kilogram. And also in a tenfold dose, it didn't uh, show uh, uh, any uh, CARPA reaction, but Zymozan uh, was very reactive. And here you can see uh, the thromboxane uh, changes. In the small dose, no thromboxane. Here, a little bit uh, of elevation, but a much higher elevation could be seen uh, for, uh, for the zymosan. <coughs> and uh, uh, they uh, changed the procedure how these uh, spions uh, are made. And they could reuse the size, uh, done size, uh, them to 30 nanometers in average. So then we call them dex, uh, dextran, coated, uh, dextran coated USPIO. And uh, here you can see that when we repeated the same exact uh, study, then 0.5 milligram per kilogram uh, of these uh, 30 nanometer nanoparticles didn't give any reaction. And also 5 milligram per kilogram uh, didn't give any reaction, but there was a uh, zymosan reaction. And also if you, uh, analyze uh, the uh, thromboxane B2 content of the uh, plasma samples, then you can see that there is no change uh, uh, from the samples taken uh, uh, during the USPIO treatment, either low or high concentration, or, but uh, there is a huge elevation uh, following uh, the pulmonary arterial pressure changes after uh, zymosan. And, and there is a paper now under review, and it's close to be uh, um, accepted with this uh, title, and this describes this uh, data. So, turn to uh, the conclusion. This study investigates the immune reactive properties of spions in a highly sensitive model of CARPA in pigs. Our previous experience with other spions, and didn't uh, tell about this uh, because of lack of time, but we did other spions from other uh, laboratories uh, and manufacturers. So uh, we had the experience uh, that uh, there could be a massive CARPA uh, upon treatment, uh, intravenous treatment with these spions. But uh, this uh, Sion uh, LEHS spions uh, seem to be a promising alternative, but of course it requires further investigations. But uh, in the second uh, part of the study, modifying the synthesis procedure and surface coating by dextran in a manner that had been done in the uh, Sion Dex, Spion, and Sion Dex USPIO, 
we got reaction-free particles and it didn't cause CARPA. So this implies uh, significant advancement in this field and a potential for safe clinical use of these nanoparticles in the future. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the collaborators in, at Semmelweis University and also at the University Hospital of Erlangen. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Laszlo. Um, any questions, please? I have a question. Uh, have you measured activation of complement of this, all these particles in human serum? Human serum? Yes. Uh, we just uh, uh, received the particles uh, from the Erlanga people, so we did only these nanotoxicology studies, so maybe uh, if they are here, they could answer to you. Please. We measured uh, complement activation in human serum and we did not see any complement activation. We did it according to the NCL assay cascade. Uh, okay, um, yes, yes please. Um, what was the uh, essential difference from this uh, uh, USPO particles um, in the first trial which caused uh, a carpary action, what do you think is the reason that these particles are so stable now and without so, any so, harm? Yes, yes, thank you, Harald. So in the first studies, it was not USPIO. These, these were larger particles, and they were uh, lauric acid and, and bovine albumin coated. So that was in the first part of the study. And the bovine albumin may be uh, one factor which is responsible for the reaction. Uh, we don't know, we have to continue with this human serum album, maybe it, it's, it turns out to be uh, reaction-free. But here we use two different sizes with dextran coated, the 80 nanometer and the 30 nanometer. This we call uh, dex uh, spion and dex uspio. And both were good, both were, both were reaction-free. And that, I think that's a good news. Thank you, Laszlo. Thank you very and much.